Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Level Up where we help you build and grow your dream practice and work with the clients that you love. We are Kate and Katie of the Private Practice Startup and Level Up is all about answering your most burning questions about private practice. Liliana Alana asks us um, a really great, great question. So if any of you are in the startup phase and watching this video now, you want to definitely listen in. So she wants to know, what are the things someone should prioritize in the startup phase in the first three months, really, of building a private practice? Ooh, such a good question and a very important one indeed. And before we dive into answering that, we just want to say thank you to Therapy Notes for their support and for sponsoring this series. If you're in need of an EHR with a telehealth platform, definitely check them out. You can go to therapynotes.com and use code PPS as in private practice startup. Gosh, first three months of business. Can you remember back to your first three front, your first three months of business? I can. And I remember I was scrambling and in a place of like desperation of how am I going to make this a sustainable business? How am I going to make it work? And there weren't a lot of resources when Katie and I started out in private practice. Mine was in, I started out in 2006. Now there's a ton of private practice resources out there, which is great. So I would encourage you to take advantage of those resources, the podcast and tips on how to open your, your private practice, because the first three months, it's really the, the bootstrapping phase, right? You're doing a lot of the building a business basics. You're getting incorporated, you're finding a location, whether it's online or as, as you're joining a group practice, or maybe you're deciding to open up your own location. So you have a location, you're getting your business, city and county tax licenses. You're, like I said, you're getting incorporated. So you're, you're having your name. You want to start thinking about your brand. Uh, there's a lot of technology and systems that you've got to think about setting up, getting your phone working and having a HIPAA compliant email platform. There's a lot of steps to that initial bid, uh, building a business process. Katie, what do you want to add? One of the things that I really want to encourage you to do a lot of times we, in Kate's right, we have to do all those things, but a lot of times we hit the ground running and we just run for it. And the reality is, is if you can step back and create mm -hmm. a clear vision um, and mission for what it is that you're up to, it's really going to help and also begin to sketch out a plan. And one of the important things that I want to talk about is numbers. So if you're thinking about leaving your full-time job, if you already left, one of the things as a business owner is you're going to need to invest in your business and don't be afraid about investing. What's really important, aside from getting the business basic stuff done, is building a solid and clear marketing mm -hmm. foundation, which is going to take investment of time as well as money, depending on how fast you want to move and really get started. If you haven't, mm -hmm. sa haven't been saving yet, to invest in your business, I strongly recommend you do. And if you're just hearing this now and you haven't saved, do that now. And it's more about the habit of being able to save, whether it's $10 a week or you know $250 a month, it doesn't matter as really get into the habit of saving. Kate and I have a really great resource for you called the HZ Cheat Sheet, the essentials you need to build, the essentials you need to the essentials you need to know to build and grow your dream practice. There we go. Um, and we'll definitely put that in the resources section. And it's all the things that you want to begin to think about. And we have two really good podcasts on how to create a private practice. And our startup coach, Susan, talks about the do's and don'ts of starting a private practice. So we're also going to put that into the resources section to Katie, what else do you want to add? Because there's so much in the startup phase. Gosh, and it's, it can be so overwhelming because it is there's so many steps, right? And that's why Katie and I suggest working with a coach, a mentor, someone can, who can help you with the step-by-step -step systems of what you need to put into place so that you have that solid foundation from the get-go. We've worked with so many coaches who have been able to, before they even open the doors to their private practice, they've been able to work with us and they have that solid foundation so that six months later they have a full private practice. It's, it's really an amazing thing because you can certainly um, decrease the amount of overwhelm and you can fast track your business to the place that you really want to be to have that full practice uh, with, the, with the ideal clients that you are called to serve, that you absolutely love working with, and the freedom and flexibility to live your life on your own terms, right? That's yeah. why so many of you got into private practice to begin with. So we have made a ton of mistakes way back in the day when we first started, and we love to help you avoid making the same ones. 
So definitely take advantage of a coach, a mentor. Our startup coach, Susan, is amazing. And I know Katie is going to share some resources about her in the resources section. So you guys can check those out. And we also have our private practice marketing e-course and coaching program. This is a great program regardless of where you are in private practice. It will help you to get that really clear foundation for your business so that you can set up the marketing strategies for your business and they will work for you time and time again. And um, we'll put the links for those in our resources section as well. The e-course is a self-study program. So you can go through that at any time and we do open coaching a couple times a year. And just some other stuff is you want to make sure, I know Kate, you alluded to this, is get legal, um, assure that you're doing things legally, the city taxes, county taxes, and don't forget paperwork when we got you covered there. So yes. you need paperwork. And one of the cool things that we often hear is when you actually invest in paperwork, a lot of times, all of a sudden you'll get a client, right? It's kind of like giving the message to the universe that you are ready. Same thing, like when you decide on an office, things begin to come together. So we really look forward to supporting you really wherever you're at um, in the startup phase or even in the mastery phase of building and growing your dream practice. So until next time, guys, remember y'all got this and we all will see you next time. Take care, everybody. See you next time. You guys got this.